Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my job on Raspberry Pi programming tutorial series. Uh, the order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at pyjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about installing the Java native interface, the JNI, on the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll run a little program afterwards just to confirm everything is installed properly. Um, I'm going to pop over to my web browser here, to my website, pyjava.com, select Pi Programming, and then installing Java Native Interface. So throughout my Java SE and Raspberry Pi tutorials, I have kept the coding at the highest possible level in order to keep things as simple as possible. Now all along I knew that at some point I would have to use the Java Native code to communicate at a very low level with the GPIO. Now I need to use uh, pulse width modulation to control the speed of the motor on the Land Cruiser. The problem is the Raspberry Pi only has one hardware pulse width modulation pin and I'm using that one to control the steering. So I will need to use the CPI GPIO library to produce another pulse width modulation signal on a completely different pin to control the electronic speed controller, the ESC for the motor. In my previous videos, that's that little box with the wires sticking out of it there. We'll attach that to the motor, and I'll go over that. So I'll also go over the uh, PIGPO library in a future tutorial here shortly. So Now, as you know, Java SE8 comes pre-installed on the Raspberry Pi 3, but it is missing several key components of the JNI, the Java Native Interface, so we will need to download and install it. So back to Oracle's website. All right, the rest of this I'm going to go ahead and just demonstrate. I want to minimize that bring up my remote into my Raspberry Pi. I've already got this loaded up here and we're just going to search for uh, Java SE SDK down load. There we go. And so we'll select this link here. <coughs> this brings you to the uh, SE development kit 8 downloads. You've probably seen this this before but we're just going to click on accept this license agreement here on this first one here and what we're looking for is this one right here Linux ARM 32 hard flow now don't get confused because of course the Raspberry Pi is a six does have a 64-bit processor on it there but the Raspbian OS is 32-bit so we want to make sure we match the one that that is the uh, you know the right one there so you'll just click on that to download and I've already done that and so I've got it in a downloads folder because we don't need to watch that download here but once it's all downloaded it'll be if you click on your little file manager there it'll be right in your downloads folder so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just uh, move that up there off the screen I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna select extract to now I'm not going to extract it right into this downloads folder. I'm going to extract it right onto the main Pi account folder there. Okay. So what we got is we got a folder that just appeared here, JDK 1.8.0 underscore 121, and the folder that uh, that you that that um, that gets produced maybe a different number will be a later one there, and that's kind of right the reason why I stuck this right here so I can show you a few things about this here. Uh, primarily what we're concerned with in here is this include folder inside of here, right? Contains this file right here, which is the JNI, the Java Na Native Interface uh, .h, right? Inside of this Linux folder underneath there, there's also this one here, JNI underscore MD dot H. Don't worry too much about that there. Just be aware that those are the two files that we're primarily going to need uh, to create our stuff there. So. Uh, so we're all done. That's extracted and everything like that. Now we're kind of uh, ready to go ahead and um, write a test program. So we'll open up the terminal here, and what we'll do is we'll type in uh, uh, make dir java. Now I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. And then we'll change directories to the java folder. And then I'm going to make dir um, hello world, right? And then I'm going to change directories to the Hello World folder. And I use the tabs a lot on the keyboard to fill in the shortcuts there. And we are going to leaf pad hello world.java. Okay. All right, let's move this right over there. Now I've already got my uh, PyJava tutorial window open over here, so we can just cut and paste some stuff, save some typing, typing time, since I'm going to be going over a lot here today. And we'll just paste this over here. So 
Um, what you're going to see is if you're not, if you've never done this before, you're going to see public native and this native, a keyword right there. Um, that'll come into play here because this is going to be the name of our uh, method here. We'll be called greetings, and we're going to be passing a parameter, a string type. Okay. Now in this static code block, which loads before the the main method there, we're going to be loading a library called PyJava. Okay which doesn't exist right now. And we're gonna get an error message here in just a second when I show you how we try to run that without actually going through all the steps yet. So in the main method entry point here, I'm just simply creating a hello world reference variable of hello world type and a new hello world object, an object of this class. We're fairly simple on that. And then you can see this, this native int method here returns back an integer type, right, greetings. We're invoking the greetings method for that object, and um, we're passing in, go ahead and change this to your name. So type in whatever your name is before we save that there. And we're passing, we're getting back an integer from it, and then we'll display that to the console. You know, thanks for passing back the number plus that number, that really helps, okay? All right, so all in all, not too bad, save this. So the first thing we're gonna do is just the normal stuff down here. We'll, we'll just close out of that, and I'll just type in, Java C, hello world, to compile it there, okay? And I'm gonna do an ls minus L. Let's take a look at our files there. We've got our hello world.class, which is our bytecode file, and our source code file. Now, if I try to run this here, and I do Java hello world, right? I'm gonna come up with an error message saying unsatisfied link error, no pi Java in java.library path, okay? And this this will come into play there, so just keep that in the back of your mind on that, okay? So now what we're going to do, and I have all this stuff listed down, down here too, right? We're gonna type in Java H minus J and I for Java Native Interface Hello World. Okay, so Java H minus J and I Hello World. All right, so it'll return us back to the prompt there. Now if I do an LS minus L, we've got this Hello World.h class. Uh, let's take a second to just take a look at it and see what's inside of it. <coughs> since Java H built the header file for us. Okay, so the first line says, do not edit this file. And that's that's a really good thing to know there. But basically this built the C header file style for us there. Um, I'll show you a few things about it. You know, they've got some comments. And if you're not familiar with C++ or C, it's really, it's not all that much different than Java. You know, even though Java is like, we are not C, we're not C++, you know, but whatever. Right, and the greetings over here, as you'll remember, and you might not, is the name of uh, the method that we specified up there. And this j int, right? The int is the uh, method return type, and this j string, which is the third parameter, will actually be the name that we passed over. So uh, let's go ahead and close out of that. And so what we want to do now is we want to uh, create another program, a C++ program, leaf pad and we're just going to call this hello world.cpp and uh, I could have done c just hello world.c but I want to do a c++ program on this initial one there you can do c or c++ you can tie them in both on the native interface there so but I just want to do this in c++ initially I'll probably do a mixture of c and c c and c++ later on here okay so coming back over to my website, we'll just copy and paste this little C++ program that I've written there. And you'll notice up top here, um, hello world.h, that's the file that the Java H made for us there, okay? And um, this is basically our greetings method here. We're getting in, um, and I specified this J string third parameter name. Now what I'm gonna do with name is I'm gonna take, it's in UTF format and I've gotta do some stuff here. Don't worry about that there, right? But S essentially becomes the name that we're passing in. The value that I'll actually hold will be Dan and this percent %S in here will substitute that in, okay? And then we just do some cleanup on releasing pointers and stuff like that and I'm returning the number 41, okay? So let's come up and save this, and now we are ready to go ahead and compile that program there. All right, so this, this next line here might look a little scary. G++ minus share, blah, 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 blah. All right, let's, let's talk a little bit about G++. G++ is um, 
basically a, a C++ compiler. There's also GCC. A lot, of, and these are you know installed by default on there, right? So then we can just basically pass little parameters and stuff like that. If you take this this whole entire line here, and we say, for example, try to copy it and come over here and paste it. Well, we're going to get an error when we hit enter on that, right? And fatal error jni.h, no such file or directory, right? Oh, that jni.h, that sounded pretty familiar, didn't it? One side of this JDK folder in the include, here is our jni.h. So um, when I created this command in the website there, you know, I put in this JDK version, and that's where you'll actually need to substitute whatever version you're on there, right? Because that folder name will vary, you know, in the future as, as uh, Oracle releases stuff there. So we're just going to go ahead and type this in J++ minus share. Don't worry about that right now. Minus I. And this is basically looking for include files. Home slash P. Right. And I can just start hitting like, for example, and I know that one starts off with JD and hit the tab and then include. Right. And um, we need to point it to one other file too as well there. Inside of this uh, include folder, there's a Linux folder there. And this one is the second one that we need to give it the path to, okay? Um, so, minus I and then same thing slash H tab, P tab, J D tab iTab and LTab Linux. So that's the path on there. Okay. Now, um, the next thing that we're going to do here is we are going to um, give it the name of the, the file that we're going to be compiling, which is the hello world.cpp, which is a C file. And then one more thing, which is minus O, which is output. And then here's the critical thing lib pi java.so. Okay. Um, and I better spell that right or we're going to end up with a total bunch of problems there. So when it compiles this hello world.c++, it's going to create this output library, uh, pyjava.so. Okay, file there. All right, so let's go ahead and hit enter on that. And let's do an ls minus l. Okay, and now we've got this live pyjava.so. Now, if you remember up from the very first uh, from our, our hello world class up here, just regular old Java, right? Um, we are loading a library called PyJava. So load library does some funky things and depending on whatever operating system, but in the, in the Raspberry Pi, <coughs> you need to prefix your library name with the uh, three letters LIB, right? And then end it with the .so here, okay? So that when, when we actually now invoke the hello world um, program here. Uh, we need it will actually execute the static block first before it goes into the main method, which will load this library. Yeah, where that that was funky. And so anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do that here. So now the next thing that we're going to do is just this command down here, just to show you I got you got you all in in here there. Um, and this one you can actually just cut and copy and paste if you want so you don't mistype anything there. I'll explain what this is doing there, okay? So this is going to tell us that uh, the minus D uh, tag for the, we're obviously doing Java to invoke the Java uh, runtime virtual machine. And then by passing it minus D java.library.path equals, that tells it to look for this library, this libpyjava.so. And the dot is, of course, our current path. And then, of course, we're um, invoking the Hello World class. So let's go ahead and hit Enter. And here's what we get. Greetings, Dan, from the C++ program. And then, gee, thanks for passing back the number 41. That really helps. OK. So um, as you can see, going back up to the original source code file there, right? we passed our C, the C++ program, this parameter of Dan. And it passed us back this in I there. So you can kind of see the whole communications between, uh, you know, a lower level um, machine kind of specific file and, you know, a higher up upper level language like Java in this particular case there. So 
Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that, minimize this, and leave you guys just with, uh, with a couple final thoughts there. So, um, you know, if this is your first time writing Java native code, well, then congrats. Uh, now we can move on into the world of Raspberry Pi GPO low-level control. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.